Hi guys, welcome back. Well, I should really be the one saying welcome back to myself given you've all probably been here for the last two months. I'm the one who left, but I am back. I don't know if I'm back permanently, regularly, weekly, just sort of dipping my toe back in after I did a live Instagram Q&A recovery chat like I used to do weekly on Instagram. And I went and did one of those two days ago and loved it, loved talking to you guys again. So I thought I'd kind of come and see how I felt about doing a YouTube video. But for this one, it's not recovery Q&A, it's more general Q&A, life questions, obviously questions about where I've been, how I'm doing, because you very graciously wanted to know sort of how I've been coping since I took a break from social media. And then there's just gonna be sort of general life opinion questions as well, because if there's anything we've got a surplus of on this corner of the internet, it's, uh, it's opinions. So let's get into it. First question was a really common one, which touches me very, very deeply, which was how I've been going with my anxiety, how I've sort of been coping with my time away from social media. And I can very happily say things have improved immensely. I am really glad that I followed my instinct and that I did everything I've needed to do to address my anxiety, to deal with all of those feelings that were associated with losing my dad, with uh, taking care of him last year, and then obviously the grief I experienced with him passing away. And I really did the best thing for myself. I went and spoke to a grief counselor, which was incredibly helpful. Therapy, still recommend it, still think it's the bomb when you find the right person. And she and I strategized some ways to get on top of that anxiety and they have worked. It is still a work in progress. It is still something that is evolving for me, but I'm starting to get to the point where the anxiety is pretty low most of the time and I'm more able to reflect on what's happened and learn from it rather than feel like I'm stuck in it, which is a really important part of the process for me to get to the place where I can start putting the pieces together. Uh, so I'm doing really well. Like I said, I'm just taking baby steps to get back to where I was with social media. Social media was a great distraction for me and all my work with my business, my YouTube, the podcast, my Instagram content and doing live Q and A's and advocacy. That was all a great uh, distraction when my dad passed away. And then it started to turn into avoidance. And I think that's what the anxiety was. It was like, you've got to deal with this and you're not. So stop distracting yourself and avoiding and actually face what's going on so you can you know, process it and, and move on. So doing really well, getting there. Hopefully you'll be seeing a lot more of me around here. The next really popular question, again, really touches me. This community is amazing. How thoughtful you are, uh, how wonderful you are to me. It, it truly means the world to me. Uh, how the fires affected you and how close were the fires? So for those of you who may not know, I know it's been international news. We've had the most devastating bushfire season on record and we are only just halfway through January, so halfway through our summer and the fires reached our town. So they were about less than a kilometer from our house, which they never should be. Bushfires should never be able to threaten where my family lives. It was terrifying, it was exhausting. We had to do things like prepare to evacuate, pack the cars, pick the things that are most important to you, family photos and objects and it's amazing what you prioritize when you think your entire family home is going to burn down and you could be homeless uh, and how much you just snap into focus about what is truly meant to be your priority. We also have my 92 year old grandmother to consider literally having to pick her up and run with her uh, if we needed to evacuate. It really snapped into focus for me, the urgency of the climate crisis. I think it's been that way for everyone who, yeah, has taken an environmental interest and believes in climate change, but don't feel like it's gonna knock on your door. It came knocking and it's really energized me to lend my voice and my input and to help out with that cause and spreading that awareness any way I can. So that's something I'm sort of thinking about with how I use my social media as well. Bit of a more general life question. Do you want kids? Yes, absolutely. That wasn't always the case. When I was in my teens and early 20s, I was like, kids, no, marriage, no. I'm not so sure still about the marriage. I absolutely would love to, you know, uh, partner with somebody if it's the right person, but marriage has never been like my goal or something I dreamt about as a kid or at any stage through my life. But as I got older, that desire to have a child uh, and to be the best parent I can be 
is pretty strong and especially now that I'm seeing my friends have babies and how amazing that bond is and that experience is and uh, I think it's it's definitely something that I know for certain that I want. There's a lot of things I'm really flexible on, uh, but having a child is not one of them. Uh, and yeah, I just hope, I'm confident that I would try my best. I'm not going to say I'd be the best mother or a great mother because we're not about piling the pressure on around here, but I think I would really try my best. When you were younger, what was your ultimate career goal? I really wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to talk about topics and connect with people about topics and spread awareness and uh, use my creativity and my voice and my passion for writing to speak to people and to bring people's attention to issues that maybe weren't getting the airtime they needed or that people, oh, hello, that people needed to hear more about. Uh, and funnily enough, that's kind of what I ended up doing. Um, I had a lot of shame for a long time that I had to drop out of uni and abandon that goal because of my mental health issues. But life is funny. You kind of have to have a bit of faith that if you follow your instinct and you take care of yourself and uh, if you're fortunate enough to have the kind of recovery that I did, which I do consider myself very fortunate, that you can kind of end up where you thought you would, just not the way you thought you would. And because I've been such a black and white thinker my whole life, that was a great lesson in being flexible, not just thinking that if you don't reach that fixed outcome, then you failed. Because if that was the case, then yes, by those standards, I have failed. But by, the, by flexible standards, I've exceeded my goals. I've exceeded what I thought was possible. And in some really cool... Uh, fortuitous ways so um, yeah I feel like I've sort of reached that goal uh, and I don't write as much as I'd like to I, I think that's something I really need to pursue more and I think that taking this break has helped me figure that out as well I, I have a, a very uh, strong relationship with sort of the written word and expressing my views in that way and that I think has been missing from my life a bit so stay tuned what's your favorite book you've read recently without a doubt catch and kill by Ronan Farrow it is so well written. It is so well written. The way that he's able to keep your attention whilst also kind of inundating you with all of this information is incredible. It doesn't feel like you're being inundated. The pace of it, it's extraordinary, amazing book. Funniest, cringiest, craziest memory with your best friend. Uh, that would have to be one of my best friends, Katie, when she and I decided to go skinny dipping in Double Bay until the sun came up. Um, what? I didn't, what? I didn't name her or tell that memory. Sorry, Kenny. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? If we're talking about where I've been before, the answer is always gonna be Lord Howe Island. I'm going back there in March. I was just there in December. What a princess. I literally, it was like the second last day of our holiday and I was like, I don't wanna leave. I'm gonna to book to come back. And I did that before we even left the island. But if it was a new location, would love to see the Northern Lights. Absolutely have to put that on my bucket list. What is your biggest fear and would you face it for a million dollars? I apparently have not been adequately compensated for facing this fear repeatedly. I'd love to be paid a million dollars to face this. Flying is my biggest fear. Flying is a deeply scary experience for me. It is total fight or flight. It is total base instinct trying to fight uh, that fear and terror and I fly all the time uh, so I don't need a million dollars I love traveling I love seeing the world and that's payoff enough for me and every time I face it and overcome it it does get a little bit easier I don't know that it'll, it'll ever totally go away but it is something I'm working on what TV character would you like to be and why Buffy the Vampire Slayer if you've ever watched any of my videos <laughs> in which I talk about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, that will not come as a surprise and sort of goes without needing to explain because it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer and who wouldn't want to be Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Can I get demonetized for just saying Buffy the Vampire Slayer repeatedly? Have you seen the new Little Women movie? I haven't. My mother went and saw it without me, so we're not speaking now. I'm kidding. The Little Women movie that was made in the 90s with Winona Ryder and Christian Bale, I used to watch that every weekend between the ages of like 12 and 14. Every weekend, I was obsessed with it. I loved Christian Bale's character, Teddy and Joe together and could never understand why they didn't end up together at 14 and now at 31, I totally understand why they didn't end up together. <laughs> 
I totally understand Joe's reasoning for not going there. I don't know if that's if they stuck to the original story in the new movie, but that's how the 1990s version ended. What do you do when you're lacking motivation but have to get stuff done? Uh, I find a good balance. I don't pressure myself or push myself if I don't have motivation. It could be a reflection of the fact that I need some time out, just like the example of me stepping away from YouTube for a while. I am pretty in tune with my needs and sort of that healthy instinct part of me. But if it is just me sort of procrastinating or avoiding, I try to remember that the feeling of procrastinating and putting something off is worse than the effort it takes to get it done. It's sort of like a, you know, uh, not gonna be perfect regardless scenario. Uh, it's not gonna feel great, but which one feels better? <laughs> and that feeling of like, I should be doing this, I should be doing this. Sometimes it's good to fight that. Like I said, if you're like, no, I genuinely need some time out. But if you are just procrastinating because you've fallen into that habit, it is a good one to challenge. And remember, once you've got it done, it just feels miles better than sitting there and torturing yourself with it. What made you decide to move from Sydney to the South Coast? Which do you prefer? I am only temporarily living on the South Coast. It was really a necessity. I, in order to take care of my dad last year, had to give up my apartment in Sydney because I didn't know how long I was going to be in America for. He could have lived for another 12 months or nine months or six months. Unfortunately, we only had him for another uh, six weeks after I arrived in America. Uh, so when I came back, I didn't have an apartment to come back to and I didn't have an awful lot of money. So I moved back down to the South Coast, which ended up being a really good thing to do because it's given me the chance to sort of take the pressure away of bills and rent and, and finding a new place to live. And it's just given me a chance to sort of take a breather. Uh, but I'm very excited to be moving back to Sydney in April, May. I'm staying up here until early February at a friend's place who's overseas. So I do get to still come up and I see my friends, uh, but I love both. I love the coast. The coast is home to me. Like when I go back there, it's like, this is where I come from. Even though I wasn't born there, I've spent m the majority of my life down there. Uh, so I can't compare the two. I love both for totally different reasons, but probably later on in my life, that's where I'll end up sort of retirement age. What are you most proud of in your life? I used to say my recovery, that used to be the most obvious answer and it's still true I'm very proud of my recovery but I think it sort of extends beyond that now I've been working as a recovery coach for two years I've helped a lot of people recover I've helped a lot of people who aren't even dealing with an eating disorder find food freedom or adopt intuitive eating or work through their body image or address some of their disordered habits and eating and that has been such an extension of my recovery I never would have ended up doing this work if not for my recovery uh, what I've been able to do in the advocacy space, the people I've been able to connect with, sort of the depth of relationship I have with myself, like all those things that are a flow on effect from having recovered in the first place. So my recovery, but also the way I turned something very painful and very dark part of my life and, and a big reason why I almost lost my life uh, and turn it into something that I hope will continue to help other people. Uh, but at the core of it, it is still my recovery. What's your favorite and least favorite part about living in Australia? Least favorite without a doubt is its proximity to the rest of the world. It takes forever to get everywhere. And as mentioned before, terrified of flying. Uh, try doing that for 24 hours straight, facing your fear for 24 hours straight. Uh, so the, how far away it is from everything. Uh, travel takes a long time, it, it is expensive. It messes with you in terms of your um, jet lag. Um, favorite thing I just love this country I just love it that time in America helped to really solidify and 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 focus in on that I love this country I think it is so beautiful we are so lucky we have such an obligation to protect it and preserve it and to take action to ensure my kids and grandkids that is one thing that really scares me about having children and I said to mum in tears uh, the day after a very scary day we had with the fires in the last couple of weeks, I said to her, it makes me not want to have children. It makes me consider not having children. And my mum, who is desperate to have a grandchild, agreed with me. I, I thought she would have said, oh, don't be silly, or no, you can't think like that. She was just like, oh, I feel the same way. It really makes me hesitate. So I love my country and 
my renewed love for it just motivates me to do what I can to keep it the way it is. Will you ever do a meetup seminar for your followers to come and watch and meet you? That is one of the things that's on the table that will probably be more likely to happen when I'm living back in Sydney, but I have a whole lot of areas of my business that I'm working on, uh, and that is to do in-person workshops. That is to create a recovery journal for you guys and actually actual, I'm sorry, what? An actual physical recovery journal. Uh, it is to start doing sort of more group calls and group sessions, uh, whether that's support or it's actual, you know, uh, coaching, doing it as a group, which I think could be really beneficial to people. There's so much I'm working on. So yes, that will come. I had plans to do that last year, which obviously got totally uh, thrown off course, but that stuff is coming, I promise. Hey Mia, I'm currently experiencing grief. It's hard and confusing. Your biggest advice. First of all, I'm here. Uh, I totally, totally am sending you so much love because I know exactly that feeling. Um, I don't know exactly your feeling, but I know my experience has not been easy. My advice now that I'm becoming more familiar with the grief process is to give yourself time. No one can tell you how to grieve. And I used to think that meant, because you hear that all the time, I used to think that meant no one can dictate how you grieve. Like you've got to approach it in your own way. No, no. What I think they mean is no one can give you a manual or a how-to guide on how to get through this. Now I understand it from that perspective. Because when I went to see my therapist, I was like, so you have like a steps one through 10 of how I'm going to navigate this and get through it and get over it and, you know, stop feeling like this. And she's like, mm, no, I'm just going to help you manage and cope and, and get through it as safely as you can. Um, and I think I have that position because recovery by comparison is a totally different process because it's like you have a disordered thought, you challenge it and you do that over and over and over and over again as part of your process. You can't challenge grief. Grief just is. Grief is a process. Grief is its own process for everyone. And the first and most important and really only step is to give yourself the time and the space and the compassion to feel what you've got to feel and to stop putting expectations on yourself or how it's meant to be or when it's meant to be over. You have every right to do what you've got to do in your own time. So I'm sending you so much love and... I really hope that you are able to find that peace. Uh, I know that I'm certainly getting there. So guys, I think that's all I'm gonna answer. I'm sorry, I didn't get to all of them. There were about 200, but I just wanted to do the ones that kind of update you on where I am, but also keep it a bit lighthearted and fun. I will be updating a bit more as I see fit or as feels good. Uh, so definitely keep an eye out on Instagram, keep an eye out here. I'm more active on Instagram than I am anywhere else though. I've loved talking to you. Like I said, let me know what's been going on with you in the comments below. And yeah, thank you for all your love and support. I hope one day I'm able to adequately express what it has meant to me. Uh, but just know I so appreciate you giving me the time I need to take care of myself so I can come back and and do some good work for you guys. Okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. Much love, take care, bye.